everyone, my name is Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. In today's video I've got a really simple landscape project for you guys uh, and it's very similar to the one we covered in the previous video. So if at some point in this video uh, it doesn't quite make sense, uh, it might be worth watching the previous one again uh, because I'm going to use a lot of the same techniques here. Now I'm going to start out with a blank watercolor paper texture and for the brushes I'm just going to use the regular watercolor brush kit. And I'll put links to everything I use, brushes, textures, even the sketch, uh, in the description down below. So to start this painting, the first thing I'm going to do is choose a pretty dark, pretty saturated blue color. I think that looks pretty good for this project. And for the brush, I'm just going to use the abstract round. And I'm just going to start by giving it a very loose background wash. So at the maximum size, I'll just make some random shapes uh, with the brush like this. And then I'm going to grab the uh, water blender and just blend that out so it's uh, kind of a soft uh, background texture. So that looks pretty good. I like the way the wash turned out and uh, I can go ahead and move on to the mountains and those are really easy. I'm just going to do each of these three mountains on a separate layer. So I'll make a new layer and I'm going to use the same abstract round brush and the same blue color, but I'm going to use the abstract round uh, at a smaller size. Let me grab that one here, maybe around like 40 or 50%, something like that. And uh, I'm just going to first, I'm going to do the uh, foreground mountains here. So I'll just fill those in the sort of ridge line there like this. Then at the end, I'll just kind of double back just because I want it to be a little bit wider. And I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to do the next mountain and then another layer and I'll do the next mountain. There we go. So I've got all three sort of mountain ridge lines and they're all on three separate layers like this. So what I'm going to do next is one by one, I'm going to go through and use the water blender to sort of blend the bottom. So I'll grab the water blender, uh, not at quite a big size, maybe 20 or 30 percent. And I'm just going to pull the bottom down like this and then just sort of mix it up and try to give it a kind of a misty look. And after that, I'm going to go in there and uh, in a few areas on the top ridge line, uh, and I'm going to try to soften that one up. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other two uh, mountain ridge lines. And because we use the same color, all the mountains are the same shade. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to progressively lighten them. So here's the uh, middle mountain there. So I'll just lighten that one a little bit. And then here's the, uh, the furthest one, the distant mountain. And I'll lighten that one even more just so I can barely, barely see it there uh, through the mist. Now after that, um, I think I'll turn the sketch back on. And if I, if I look at the close mountains here, um, because I just, you know, did them with the abstract round brush, they ended up a little bit soft, but I want these to be uh, more detailed and more rocky. So what I'm going to do is rough it up with the eraser brush. So I'll set that one to the fine liner pen. Uh, and I'm just going to try to rough this up and give it a kind of interesting kind of stony texture. There we go. That looks pretty good. And I'm happy with the mountains and I think I can move on to the trees now. So I'll make those on a separate layer, but uh, at the very top. And for that, I'm going to use the, um, it's called the quick pine brush. And I covered this in the previous video, but uh, I'll cover it again here. It's the, there's another brush kit that comes with the regular watercolor kit. Uh, it's just in the extras and updates folder. So if you have the regular kit, just check in that folder and you can find the bonus set. And uh, here's the quick pine brush. And I'm going to use this one at a much smaller size than I usually do, maybe around 20%. And uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, create a bunch of trees kind of following the sketch. There we go. That looks pretty good. And uh, I think at this point I can just merge everything together and move on to the lake. So I'll just pinch all of these layers together uh, and I can trim the bottom using the selection tool. So I'll zoom out here and I'm going to grab the selection tool and set it to rectangle. And I'm just going to try to make a selection that sort of ends at the uh, border of the lake there, the sort of shoreline, I guess. And uh, because all this is on one layer, I can just tap that layer and click clear and it will only clear that kind of rectangle that I selected. And uh, this works pretty good, but it does leave a extremely laser sharp uh, edge there. So I'm going to rough that up using the uh, eraser brush. And I think at this point, I don't really need to sketch anymore. So I'll switch that off and uh, I want to create the reflection. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that layer. I'm going to click the arrow tool. And over here, you can see this flip vertical, and then I'll deselect it. And after that, I can grab the arrow tool and just sort of position the reflection down here. And I want there to be a little bit of white showing through. 
But you can see because I mirrored it, the white line is mirrored. And in some cases, this will cause a kind of a problem. So after I just roughly line it up like this, uh, I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and sort of rough up the reflection, but I wanna rough it up slightly differently than the original one, uh, just to make those so they don't kind of like mirror exactly. There we go. And uh, I, want, I wanna position this a little bit closer, just so it's touching in a few areas, just like that. And then I'm gonna go to my layers panel and I'm gonna lighten the reflection just a little bit. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna merge the reflection and the original one together. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's a few places where the original is just touching the reflection. And uh, I think it's a good idea to use the water blender in those areas. So I'm gonna grab the water blender down here, but at a really, really tiny, tiny size, I'll just sort of blur that boundary. And I'm gonna go along this and do the same to anywhere else that it uh, touches. And you know, if you were painting this with real watercolor and you didn't have the ability to just exactly copy this and then mirror it, uh, you'd end up with a reflection that is slightly different than the original. So I can sort of approximate that by using the water blender, uh, but this time at a much larger size. And I'm just gonna try to blur the reflection just so it's slightly different than the original. And as a kind of a finishing touch down here, I wanna add a shadow. So I'm just gonna select uh, pretty much any brush will do. Uh, and I'll do this on a different layer above the painting. And I'll just make some random shapes down here like this. And then I'll use the water blender to sort of mix that up. There we go. I'll lighten it just a little bit and then I'll merge those together. So now everything is on one layer. And next here, the uh, last step to kind of finish this up, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the previous video. Uh, I'm gonna use the selection tool to cut this into a rectangle. And then I'm gonna use the eraser brush to just sort of rough up that uh, super sharp edge. And there we go, this one is all done. As you can see, it prints out really nicely and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Now, in my opinion, an abstract painting like this, uh, it really lends itself to the salted watercolor brush kit. And uh, I'll put a link in the description for that if you're curious about it. But when I use the salted kit, uh, it looks like this. And uh, it just adds a nice texture, kind of something interesting to the uh, sort of boring kind of wash areas. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, please uh, give this video a like uh, if you're into these kind of tutorials and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.